So what are my respiratory therapy school tips? So I'm gonna give you a few tips for school and then I'm gonna give you a few tips for clinical as well. So with many of you don't know what clinical is. Clinical is when you go to the hospital and you work with a preceptor or a clinical instructor and they kind of instruct you on everything that you're gonna be doing as a respiratory therapist and what you're learning in school. So before I get into everything, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Austin Marks. I am currently a respiratory therapist. I've been an RT for about two and a half years now. On my YouTube channel, I mainly talk about respiratory therapy. I do a few other videos talking about a couple other things. If that interests you, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, I am also the admin of a Facebook group called the RT Club. And on this Facebook group, it's full of respiratory therapists, respiratory therapy students, and anyone looking to aspire respiratory therapy. On, on this Facebook group, we talk everything respiratory. So if you want to be a part of this community, make sure you head over there. So before I go over clinicals, I just want to talk about what you should be doing in school. So let's just start off with saying that the semester just started. You want to be prepared. Do not come to school unorganized. Have a planner. Write down all your test dates when all your homework is due. Write out your daily studying schedule. Okay, so I get off of work at this time. I spend family with this time. I want to play Xbox a little bit this time. Um, write down when you're going to be studying. And I highly suggest that you study anywhere from 20 to 30 hours a week besides class time. I know right now you're thinking, wow, that's, that's a lot. Yes, if you want to be successful in respiratory school, you need to put the time in. So I would say 20 hours. Um, that includes reading your notes, writing your notes, writing everything down, um, going over flashcards, note cards, um, and teaching it to somebody else. So I'm going to talk about all that a little bit in this video as well. So what I highly suggest for everyone is you read your notes and understand all the information before you go to class. You do not want to go to class and hear all this information for the first time in class. You want to stay ahead of the game. You want to get a base understanding of exactly what you're studying, what you're learning, and then go to school and then hear your teacher talk about it and it's going to make a little bit more sense and then you can ask questions about certain things you didn't understand um, and then you can go about studying it rather than hearing it for the first time in class, understanding maybe 25% of it, going home and thinking, I didn't understand anything the teacher was talking about, and then reading it, nothing, none of this makes any sense. And then you gotta go back to class the next time where you already missed a few days of asking questions and actual study time, and the teacher's going over everything, and then time you actually understand the information, it's test time, and you had no real time to study, you only had time to understand the information. You didn't have time to master it. So this is why I say go to class prepared, understand all the information, or get a base understanding of what actually is going on when you go to class, and then when you go to class, you can ask questions. Because there were times I went to class, and the class was just so fast, I was just writing notes, writing things down, and then I didn't even go about asking any questions because I can't say that I was always ahead, which was a downfall of mine. And this is why I always preach to students, stay ahead and read ahead. It sucks, but it is so worth it. One thing that I strongly do not suggest is recording your lectures and then listening to them over again. If you're going to be doing this, do it in the car and listen to it in the car. Don't sit at home when you can be using that valuable time of actually real studying and listening to lecture again. Relisting the lectures is very passive and you don't retain much of the information at all. You want to do something known as active studying or active learning rather than passive learning. So like I said, passive learning would be rereading all your notes over again, rewriting them over again, and then just saying, okay, I studied, that's how I did it. Um, no, you want to learn this information and ingrate it in your brain. So one thing I love is flashcards. So you look at the flashcard, you say, oh, okay, I know that. I'll look at it again later. Okay, I'm looking. And then your mind will begin to memorize. Oh, you see that word, and it just puts a definition with it. So instead of just saying what's on the back of the flashcard, talk about it a little bit. Just explain what is on that flashcard. Another thing with this is don't do your flashcards every single day. So if you remember a flashcard and you keep forgetting it and getting it and getting it, put it off to the side wait a few days and then do it again. So an app that does this automatically is an app known as Anki. 
A-N-K-I. So I have it up here. Um, the free version for the iPhone is fantastic as well. I know for the Android it's just automatically free. But what this does is it mixes spaced repetition along with the flashcards. And you can make all these flashcards by using talk to text or typing because that's so much easier than writing out all this information. Plus, you save a little bit of money by not having to buy flashcards. So my two tips so far are to come to class prepared and you have a little bit of knowledge about what's already going on. And number two is to study, study actively. Make sure that you're retaining that information, that way you can remember it for the final or five years later down the line when you're actually a respiratory therapist. And then thirdly is don't be afraid to ask questions. So this kind of brings us into clinical. So when you're at clinical and you're doing something for the first time, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you're seeing something in the hospital and you have no idea what's going on, ask your clinical instructor. Say, hey, what's going on with that patient? Why are we doing this? Why are we giving that drug? Why are we doing that? Um, your clinical instructor may not always have the answer and that's okay. They can go ahead and ask somebody else. Um, that's just the nature of the beast with healthcare is not everybody has the answer to everything. That's why we work as a team and we kind of bounce ideas off each other and we do everything we can to make the patient better. So when you're also in clinicals, you want to volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. So you want to make sure that you actually are doing these things in clinical because when you get out in the real world, guess what? You're going to be doing it. And if you want to be doing it for the first time by yourself, uh, that's a little scary. Um, I'd rather have somebody watching over my shoulder and making sure that I'm doing it the correct way. That way they can kind of critique me um, rather than putting somebody at risk because I'm doing it for the first time. So it's going to be scary. It's going to suck, but you need to volunteer and make sure you do everything. So a lot of schools do have competencies. They make sure that you have to be signed off and make sure that you do everything. Um, that way you're not actually doing it for the first time out in the field or as a respiratory therapist. You want to make sure that you come to clinicals prepared. Bring a stethoscope, bring a pulse ox, bring your study material because sometimes you're just sitting around waiting for things to happen as a student um, throughout your clinicals. And what are you going to be doing this time? Just talking and BSing? No, you want to go ahead and make sure that you're using this time to study. That way, when you go home, you can actually do whatever you want. You got to be at clinicals, you got to be there doing whatever. Like, that's forced time. So like I said, you want to study about 20 hours, so why not take some of that time while you got to be somewhere um, rather than taking it out of your own time. That's just my personal opinion. So those are a lot of my tips. I do have many more tips, but I don't want to make this video too long. If you have any questions, if you're watching this and you're an RT student or you graduate from respiratory therapy school, you have some tips, you have some questions, whatever, leave in the comments and I'll get back to you. Maybe someone else will comment as well. Well, anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.